I wanted to bring all of that to your um, forefront of your thinking so that you would be interested to go read some of it for yourself and really dive into it um, and look at Jesus in a different light of how much he had to do when he came here to not just you know deliver us from the darkness on the inside of us but uh, all of the spiritual forces he had to yeah all the works of wickedness that uh, we're still dealing with today so but this uh, this portion of it I want to talk uh, I want to talk about um, prayer um, our authority in prayer um, last meeting we talked about the weapons of our warfare yeah. being on the battlefield but on this, this time I want to talk about prayer how it relates to us in the courtroom because that's an and an, an, an issue that we need to look at because what we don't want to do is we don't want to try to be on a battle on a, in a courtroom doing battlefield stuff two different settings two different results so if what we need to do we need to stay locked in with the Holy Spirit because there are times, well most of the time, you need to get, and I need to get my marching orders from him. What's going on? What do we do? What do we need to do? Where are we going here? And, that, and that's how we pray. And then we go to war, amen? Once we get our marching orders from heaven, once the Lord shows us what, we're, what he's doing, then we do it. Because remember, we follow him. It's not the other way around. Now, sometimes I think maybe we just kind of blast out there. You know, I'm just talking about in general in the body of Christ. Um, I know you've had people pray for you and, and, and then you get finished and you go, what was that? Because they just launch out and just pray stuff and, you, and you're standing there thinking, he, he's, he might as well be praying up in Mars somewhere. So... We don't want to do that. We want to take our time and be effective yeah. in the kingdom. Because when we're effective, guess what? You'll like prayer more. Yeah. You'll enjoy prayer more. You'll, you'll, you'll see things happen. And whether or not you see things happen, you just have the satisfaction to know the Holy Spirit did something with you. Um, you took care of some things and you move on. And then there's time we, we are on the battlefield. We do go and cast out devils, and we do all those other kind of things, and that's good. So looking at it from that point of view, remember prayer in the courtroom, this is a legal, judicial um, setting. It's really about a relationship friend to friend. That's what that's all about when we're in the courtroom with the Lord. Um, Revelation 19.10, the word says testimony, and that word actually means to give judicial witness so we've got to know and understand what we're doing when we're doing things for the Lord um, my note says I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who give judicial witness of Jesus we worship God for the judicial witness of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy Okay. That kind of makes more sense then why the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Mm -hmm. Because you, in the spirit, when the spirit of prophecy is on you, you're able to speak and declare those yes. things into that realm and take authority over, you know, in the courtroom. Exactly. Bringing witness against, bringing witness for. Yes. Forward, taking authority over and asking God for the final judgment on that matter. Exactly. Because, you know, we, we, it, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, because we, look, all of heaven is on our side. But, you know, there's a but, right? But God's going to do it right and just and legal. He is the judge. So it has to be right. And he wants it to be right so that he can execute what he needs to get executed. He know the enemy 
he knows the enemy is, is, is a bad boy. He, 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 he understands that. But he wants us to come, submit, and do it the way he needs us to do it. He's given us all the tools, everything that we need for victory. We just have to pray, find out what the Lord is saying, find out what the Lord is doing, and go do that. You know, and that's how we do our intercession. When we're in our intercession, we, we pray. Oh, we may start out, you know, doing the general stuff, but then we want to lock in and see what the Holy Spirit is doing. What are you saying, Holy Spirit? And then we go, and we just take off. And that's why, to me, uh, walking in the Spirit over all these years has been a lot of fun because you, you just never know what's going to happen in prayer. You hear a lot of Christians that go to prayer and they're, and they're like, oh, another prayer meeting? Shuck, we're just going to go pray for 30 minutes. I don't, you know, nothing ever happens. And, and yeah, it would be boring if you go into a prayer meeting and it's, it's just all out of your mental state, out of your mind. It's all out about, you know, Lord, bless Aunt Susie. You know, the bunions on her feet are not doing good. And Okay, you know, I mean, I mean, how much of that can you, I don't mind praying for Aunt Susie's bunions, but dear God, we don't have to do that every week, do we? You, you know what I'm saying? That's for personal prayer time, your personal yeah. needs. But when you meet corporately, it's for kingdom business. It's, it's for kingdom business, exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and that doesn't happen in a lot of prayer meetings. And I'm not, look, I'm just being honest with you. I'm, you know, you, 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 know what is, you know what I'm talking about if you've been out there. I've been in some prayer meetings. Um, I, to be honest with you, I don't let everybody pray for me. I don't. Because there's too many people that'll pray doubt, unbelief, and it, it'll make the situation worse. Now I have to really stand against another spiritual force that you've prayed on to me. And it, why, why do I want to do that? So... You've got to use some wisdom. That's, there, that's nothing against anybody. And I'm not talking about anybody in this room. I'm not, I'm not saying it. You've got to have a little wisdom. Just the word says, lay hands suddenly on no man. Do that in the reverse. Don't let somebody lay hands on you suddenly. Right. Yeah. Right. So let's just use the wisdom of the Lord. You know, it's nothing against people. It's about keeping yourself in a spiritual place where you're ready to go, you're combat ready, or whatever the case may be, amen? Look, you don't need any more battles for somebody to bring you. Hey, you need a couple extra battles for me to throw on you? No. You know, and that's a good point, because when you stay in the spirit, especially when you're in corporate prayer, the stuff he wants you to pray about, he will tell you. Yeah. And the rest of the stuff, and there's thousands and millions of prayer needs, okay. but the rest of them are not your concern. Exactly. He wants you to pray this now. Yeah. Then you're done with that, this now. Yeah. Okay, what about now, Lord? Okay, you're done. Yeah. And you go home. And you go home. It's not our responsibility. It's not our burden. Yeah. We just obey the Holy Spirit. Yep. Obey. That, that, that sounds easy, but sometimes if you don't get around groups, if you're not in a group with, that does that, then you can push them to that and say, hey, guys, let's pray. I remember we was, uh, years ago, we would go in these prayer meetings, and the prayer meeting would be for an hour. <laughs> and we would take the first 30 to 40 minutes talking and then pray for 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, somehow this isn't right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we just kind of we were just kind of playing with prayer, and then we and then we uh, God led us with Brian and Alice, and and they were the first ones to say we're going to pray for an hour, and we prayed in the spirit for an hour. My God, that I, the first time I ever did that, we prayed for, I prayed and prayed and prayed, and then all of a sudden, God, this got to be thirty minutes. Five minutes? Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> Holy smokes! But it's workups. It is. Mm -hmm. You know now you. You know, praying for an hour, you just walk around, you just pray, you just do it. You just tell the flesh, shut up, we're doing this for an hour, okay. Yeah. And then you get the zone, and then it's easy. And then it's easy, and then yes. Get the time. Yes. Exactly. Well, the Amen. cherry for an hour really yeah. helped us yeah. to format. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's talking about, um, um, what's the guy's name? Larry Lee. Larry Lee. Everybody remember Larry Lee from Texas? Way back. Yeah. Way back in the 90s. Could you not, could you not tarry for an hour? He, he, yeah. People were coming to that church. They were lined up off the freeway to go to his church. Yeah. It took off. 
our Father who's down in heaven. And it broke it down, and it taught yeah. me how to pray. An yeah. hour's nothing. An hour's yeah. nothing. It went by like, yeah. wow. I remember that. That's yeah. Where is Larry Lee now? Wow, I pray he's doing all right. Kind of feeling, and feelings aren't everything, obviously, in prayer, but, I mean, you're alive, man. When you're praying, when you really pray, you know it. You know you're there. That's true. What a place to be. Yes. And we talk about it. I, I'm in the room. I sense it, Mike. I, I'm there. He just invited us into the living room. We're there, surrounded by him uh -huh. and others in prayer about those specific things about which he, like you said, right here, right now, I want you to pray about. Yeah. Not this Amen. other stuff. Yeah. This. And when you hit the nail on the head like that, you know it. And you that, know it. And Kind of piggybacking on what you're saying there, um, yeah, we want you, in your prayer meetings, you d you want what heaven wants to happen. Right. That's right. We want to pray from not always petitioning, Lord, we need this, Lord, we need that. What is, what is heaven's business going on? What yes. what does the Father need? What does Jesus want us to do? What are the st strategic things that we need to be praying for or through or whatever. We already know some of them. We know we gotta pray for our president. We know we gotta pray for our Congress. We know we gotta pray for our governor. We don't, those are the standard deals. Right, yeah. that, that never goes away. And we know we pray for one another. But beyond that, right. what else does the Lord want us to pray for? Hop on Jacob's ladder, come on up and take a peek. Come on up and say, come yeah, on. there you go. You I like that. From my point of view. Yep. Come yeah. up here, John, so mm -hmm. you can see the end times from the spirit, Amen. spiritual point of view. Yep. The unseen realm. Remember that prayer meeting we had at Mike and Kim's um, before the Seattle thing broke out? Remember three weeks before mm -hmm. that, I had a vision in prayer, and we started praying for Seattle, and the yeah. vision was the space oh, yeah. that grew up into the heavens. Yeah. And we were praying and praying and praying for Seattle. Yep. Praying mm -hmm. for a minister yep. to hit the streets of Seattle. Mm -hmm. And three weeks later, you Blew have up. Chop or Chaz or whatever they call yeah. themselves. Yeah. But also you had ministers going into Seattle witnessing to those people on the streets. Yeah, that's and, right. And we had no idea Seattle was going to blow up like that. No. But God knew. That's right. God knows everything. And mm -hmm. we were a part that's of right. that. We're that's obedient. right. Yes. Yeah. Now, were we the only ones? No. Pro no, of course no. not. God had an, God, he has an army. He, he, has, an army. he has an army. What do you tell that one guy? I've got 7,000 knees that have not bowed, dudes. You're not the only one. Right. Come on. That was the other part of praying it is when we pray and someone else in the prayer group understands it and says, you know what? And reminding all of us, we're not the only ones yeah. praying yeah. this right. prayer mm -hmm. right now at this time right. that there are many prayer groups around this nation, right. around this world that are reaching out for this particular subject, That's right. this particular moment right here, right now, and it makes you feel, and un stop the feelings, but it makes you understand you're part of something bigger than you are. That's right. That's right. Four or five people. Well, that's Amen. part of the unity. That's right. Yeah. Coming in together. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. No, it's, <laughs> you guys are doing good. I mean, it's, it's look, you know, I. I like when you guys do that. I just don't want to make sure that uh, we get out too late and whatnot. And then, uh, you know, you know, sometimes I get sensitive on the time and stuff like that. I don't care about uh, you guys commenting. I mean, because this is the body edifying itself. Yes, it's good. O okay. And, and we've got to have that. And so I don't have to be, you know me, I, I can sit in the back and be fine. Seriously, I can be fine in the back. It's like, Lord, okay, I'll sit down and take a back seat. I'm good. But right now, I just happen to be here. So, so anyway. All right, so we talked about that. <clears throat> Remember, prayer is a legal transaction that has to be executed. Oh, that's good. Otherwise, it has no power or bite. In other words, a judge can issue a decree of judgment but without enforcement, that decree has no power or effect. Right. Can you repeat all that? Real yeah. Quick? Mm -hmm. It's a legal transaction. Uh, prayer is a legal transaction that has to be executed. Otherwise, it has no power or bite. A judge can issue a decree 
of judgment, but without enforcement, that decree has no power or effect. I'll give you an example. Do you know that if the President of the United States gives you a pardon, you must, you must either accept or reject that pardon? It is not automatic. Yeah, I didn't know that. Now, who's going to say no? I don't know, but, yeah. but that's part of the legal process. So you can say, no, that's okay, I'll just do the 30 years. Okay. <laughs> so you're talking about take, taking something in scripture and praying it to bring it into this realm and enforce it. It could be, or it could be something that as you're praying, like we do in, in intercessory prayer, mm -hmm. the Lord puts something on our heart and, and then he wants you to declare it or decree it, you know, pray over it. Mm -hmm. um, Use your authority because remember, God has given you and I the authority. Mm -hmm. yeah. And because he's given you and I the authority, he's not going to move you or me out of the way and say, I got this. Right. 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 Yeah. He wants us to use the authority he's given you. He's going to use his. Mm -hmm. He's going to back you up because authority has to be what? That comes from somewhere. Yes. And he's going to back you up. But if we don't do what he tells us to go do, then it, it's useless. Yeah. Can I give an example? If you and I do not go and cast the devil out of people, they'll still have demons. Yeah. Um, I went to a prayer okay. meeting and they knew topics that they needed to cover, so they were making all these decrees. But I noticed that nothing was happening. And so I prayed, I said, Lord, what's going on here? And so when I, when they were done and we were, everybody's taking turns that was there to pray, and the Lord had me go up and read, uh, there was like a chapter in Psalms he wanted me to read. And whatever was in that Psalm, that had cut and broke things. And yeah. then we were able to get things done and other things started to be revealed. But so it was like... Mm -hmm. I don't know that they asked the Lord what he wanted them to pray. It's like they were praying on their own strength and they didn't ask the Lord or something. But it was like, it's, you know, you can pray things that you know to pray, but it's not as powerful as you, like we've been talking about, wait on the Lord. Yeah. What does he want you to do and how does right. he want you to do it? Exactly. And the scripture is, it's always good to ask the Lord about, you know, you have a scripture you want me to pray into this because it, it cuts things. It mm -hmm. does. Because we're to execute mm -hmm. the, the we're to execute the judgment or the statute or the word that's written. Right. We're the executors of the word of God. Yes. Yep. That's that's what we're here to do. And if we don't do that, so you can see just from your example how that kind of makes it 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 brings us down a few notches of our effectivity. We we want to be effective. In the prayer time that we do do and have, we want to be effective, but it almost sounds like you were somewhat effective or maybe not effective at all because you didn't get the word that he, the rhema word that he gave yes. you to, 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 that God has anointed yes. to blast whatever he's doing yeah. to and take it, that down. It's like, it, it's like the anointing just boom. Yeah, because that's the anointed word. That's that's what God's doing. You we want to tap into what he's doing. It's not the other way around. Amen. Right, right. It's like there's lots of soldiers in the army. The soldiers can go off and fight. But without following the directions from the commanders, their fighting becomes almost useless because it's not according to a plan that bring, is meant to bring about something. Right. Exactly. Right? But they can go fight. Yeah. They can fight each other. <laughs> it's <laughs> true. It's <laughs> true. I, they do that plenty too. Yeah. Doesn't that almost sound like that um, uh, about the, the, the centurion? Mm -hmm. Isn't that what he said? Yeah. He said, the word. Yeah. He said I'm a man under authority. When I say go or come or do, that's when it gets done. Right. Yeah. Isn't that what he said? Yeah. Right? And Jesus said, whew, man, that's, that's, 
This guy's on faith. That's how the kingdom works. That's how the kingdom works. That's why there's only two times Jesus marveled. You can probably guess the two times. That one. That's one. And What's the, the other, other one? one was the widow who said she'd gather up the crumbs underneath the king's table. And then he did another yeah. one. The blood. Is your blood? No. Nope. No. No. It was, it was, no. Go to the other end of the spectrum. She, she was Samaritan. Yep. And she, yep. he said, Jesus, when she first asked, yep. he said, uh, why would I give the children's bread to the dogs? Mm -hmm. And she said, well, even the dogs get to gather up the crumbs under the table. And he said, so be it unto you according to your faith. Okay. Yeah. There's another time that Jesus marveled, and it says that he marveled at their unbelief. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. He, he, it's two, two, two extremes. He marveled at this man's faith, and he marveled at their unbelief. So... So what does that tell us? Stay <laughs> as much in faith, <laughs> right? <laughs> we don't want the Lord marveling at us. Go, Keith, you come on, yeah, really? Yeah, like, oh my God, God, come on, Keith, <laughs> <Really? laughs> right? Yeah. Come on, oh, man. <laughs> so, so I'm, you know, we're, we're, I'm trying to work on that. How long do I have to suffer? <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, right. Exactly. How long do I have to suffer? <laughs> Now, salvation is a legal transaction. For everyone to join and come into the family because it is a legal invitation. It is actually a legal decree. It's a legal position that all men have been set free. That's the legal position. Yeah. Of salvation. Of salvation, yes. Yeah. It is a legal position that God bought and paid for, and it's sitting there, the presidential pardon is sitting there on everyone's desk. Every man, woman, boy, and girl has a presidential or king's pardon already on. See, that's why it's such a travesty of justice for anybody to go to hell. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's why it's just so bad. Yeah. They, had, they had to take it out, and they just, they, for whatever reason, Stubbornness, pride, you name it. Yeah. Ignorance. Ignorance. Everything, so. All of it. There's no reason for anybody to go to hell. None. You go because you say, I don't want that and I don't need that. Yeah. Okay. It's already paid for. I'll make it there by my own right yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's only one place the rebellious is going. Sure. One. Right. The same thing you said about pardon. You have a choice. He yeah. gave you the choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you have a choice. We have a choice. You can choose yes or no. Yeah. That's the most precious thing that God has given all of his creation is the power of choice. This is what you see in Genesis 6. This is what you see in, 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 in uh, Satan who fell or the Satan, however we want to call it. God has he knows the, um, how do I want to say it, the, the risk that's involved with giving a, a created being choice. Yeah, yeah. You have to understand that. If I understand it, I know he does. But to be a loving God that he is, in his mind, he can't do anything else because he loves his creation. So he's going to give them choice. And that choice, as we see, has, we're dealing with all of this now. Yeah, there's consequences. But God doesn't want robots. Look, could God wrap everything up on salvation tomorrow to now? Yes, he could. He could show up, everybody would either get saved or burn up or whatever the case may be, and this would be all over. But he chooses not to do that. He has chosen for whatever reason. He is going to, he is, he has a plan. He's executed it. He's doing it. And that's the way it's going to be. Amen. That's right. Does he need you and I? 
But he won't go against question. his word. He won't go against the word he's already put before exactly. him. Exactly. True. But technically, does he need you and me? Oh, no. Nope. No. Nope. Doesn't need anybody. But he has chose to use you and I and include us into his plan. And this was so good about God. He brings us into the plan. Be obedient. Uh, okay, Lord. And if you be obedient, then do my will, not yours. When it's all said and done, I will reward you as if it was your idea. Yeah. <laughs> that's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Right, right? Yeah. And that's what we struggle with. Yeah. God's a good God. I mean, he's accused of a lot of stuff, but, you know, they accuse Trump of stuff every day. So, I mean, if they accuse him of stuff, they have, they have accused God for thousands of years. Oh, I, want, I did want to make a point. Oh, yes. Just, I want to segue back to Genesis 6. The, uh, <clears throat> I was going to take five minutes from that, because I meant to say this. Part of the reason that Genesis 6 is in the Bible, one of the reasons is... The obvious is he's showing us what's going on. But the Mesopotamian story is a story that has every um, um, point in Genesis. There's good guys, there's bad guys, there's gods, there's a flood. Every point, there's a counterpoint in the Mesopotamian story. Where did Abraham come from? The land of Ur. Land of Ur. Which is where? Canaan. Which is where? Canaan. 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 It's, which is in Mesopotamian. Mesopotamian. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. You starting to see some stuff here? God calls him out of this whole Mesopotamian mindset, uh -huh. okay? And so he calls him out and he says, I'm going to do something new with you. Okay. And he does it. But Abraham was in that whole Mesopotamian. They had these guys called the Abkalu. And they were supposed to be like they had these seven gods called the Atkalu. And these guys were supposed to be the cultural heroes of the time. And, and of course, they went out and they had sex with women. The, the god that was over them, Mardu. Does this sound like a cartoon or what? <laughs> so Mardu gets mad. Because they went down and had sex with women, he judges them, sends them to the abyss, or what they call it, the, the double rivers, or something like that, I forgot what they call it. Sends them to the, the abyss for a time frame, because he's mad. Everything that you see in Genesis is in the Mesopotamian story, everything, down to the smallest point. Yeah. Now, why do you think that's like that? Because the devil is a counterfeit. Yeah. Okay? Always. So, the devil has counterfeited the story. God speaks to his people and says, when you write Genesis, put this in there because Genesis 6 is a direct attack on the Mesopotamian story. Yeah. That's another reason why that's in there. It's a direct attack. Because when you begin to read the story about the, uh, the Mesopotamians and, and all the gods and everything, you go, this sounds like Genesis. Mm -hmm. There's, there's a, what, I think it's in, it in law nowadays that says if he who gets to the courthouse first uh, has rights or something like that, you know how, you know how it works? Yeah, when you, when you file a case against someone, yes. you have the rights. Yes. Whoever walks up to the courtroom, to the, to the courthouse first, is the one that says, I'm right. 
And then you, you will come to the courthouse next. You are the one that's the true victim. You go up to your courthouse and say, no, that's not really right. And they look at you and say, nope, we have it right here that says you did something wrong. You must prove your innocence. Yeah. What? That's how that works. Yeah. Whoever gets to the courtroom first. Sure, but you are in the defensive position now. Okay? Yes, they do. That's right. They call you the defendant. And and the other the other the um, the plaintiff can be wrong as a three dollar bill. Doesn't matter. They got there first, and that's what the devil does. He's a counterfeit. What you're going to find as you begin to search through some of this stuff that we were, we've been talking about earlier, what you're going to find is you'll see all these gods and they're all counterfeits of God's kingdom. All of it. Right. Every bit of it. Every bit of it. Principalities, powers, all that. Because, the, because the Satan was in God's kingdom before he was kicked out. He knows how that thing works. He was in the throne. He knows whatever God's doing works to the T. It's perfect. He's an angel and a fallen one. He's not a God. Right. He's an angel. He doesn't create anything. He's the accuser of your brother. Oh, that's one of 15 names he's gotten. In the courtroom, that's what he's known as. Mm-hmm. So he is an imitator. Right. He imitates everything that God does, everything down to the T. What you know that you know the scripture, right? The enemy <laughs> comes to you like a what? Roaring lion. Roaring lion, and then what's the other one in Corinthians? Angel As an angel of light. Yeah. Yeah. Masquerading as light. When he's full of darkness. To deceive you. That's right. And you know what? One of the hardest things for you and me without the spirit of God to understand is anything that's evil wrapped in good. That's hard to detect. Think of what it says, Matthew 24. The first thing he says is let no man deceive you. Mm -hmm. that's a, and that's very important. That's the very first thing he says. But you, but you know what? As we've been reading through some of the other scriptures, we just did. I just went through a study on on uh, Second Timothy and we went through Second uh, Timothy three, one through nine and all the stuff that's talking about. That's going to I meant to tell you guys that that's the world. First Timothy, uh, first Timothy is the church. Second Timothy is the world. I'm sorry. So. Yes. What is the first writer that leaves in Revelation? What, who, Dwight Horse, and what is he? Deception. Deception. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yep. Doesn't it, this stuff is falling in place, isn't it? Yeah. I, I'm starting to see some eyes are going, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm getting it. I'm seeing it. Yeah. And Jesus is riding in on a white horse. Yeah, that's yes, the end, but that's but, that but right. think about it. No. no, no, no. The first horse, he looks like. The son of man. Right. Remember? On the white horse. On the white horse. He's imitating. Yes. That's why the Antichrist, the whole situation, God putting his seed in a woman, right? God on earth, right? Mm -hmm. The Antichrist is just that. The devil putting his seed yep. in a man who will rise up to be the savior of the world. That's the Antichrist story. Yep. No, nothing, nothing is new. It's, it's not. It's the same story. He's imitating what God did with our, with our Lord. He's imitating it. I like what he said. I was, me and Debbie was talking uh, at lunch. I like what, uh, what's that, Adam Spears that did the, that was doing the videos? John Klein. Adam Spears. Oh, it was Klein. It was Klein? John, Klein. John Klein did the video. Okay. Um, Adam Spears helped write the book. I like what Klein said. He said, Jesus dies for his bride. Yeah. Satan kills his. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. That's, that's what the, the people, the, the, the useful idiots that are running around here, you, the devil says, you do this for me and I will give you all the wealth you need. Until I'm done with you and then. And then, and then you're done. Yeah. 
That's the part that it's kind of like working for the mafia. It is. Let me see. What is my end going to be? I'm sitting in a car. Hey, man, let's go. Boom. And I did all this for you. Yeah. <laughs> right? What would you, why would you expect anything else if you was in a mob? I would never sit in the front seat with two guys behind me. Are you kidding me? <laughs> who, who would do that? They watched, they watched the head guy waste life after life of people that didn't even do anything wrong. Right. And, and they, they wonder why when he does it to them. <laughs> why would you do this to me, man? It's just business. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that makes you feel better. Gosh, it's just business. But anyway, that's the devil. So I wanted to throw that into you. And, and, and so when you begin to read through some of uh, um, the material, I, I pray you get, uh, go to Enoch, the Charles edition, whatever, and start reading through some of the stuff. There's about three different volumes of Enoch. And he talks about a lot of different stuff in his book, Dreams and Prophecies. And he even saw the end of the world. I mean, it was, yeah. he's got a lot of stuff in there. Well, he even talks about uh, the father walking with the son of man. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's crazy. And Enoch's like, yeah. who's this guy? Right. Right. Exactly. I mean, Enoch's out there. So it, it's just kind of fun as we've been, we've been going through the book of Revelation, through the Lost in Translation stuff. But I just wanted to get that to you about the Mesopotamian um, imitators. And you're going to see that with uh, anything you look up when you're talking about... Um, whether well, it's Jezebel, Baal, what, you, you name it, it just doesn't matter. It just doesn't. It's, it's all the same stuff. It's all the same spirit. Yeah, it's all the same stuff. Now, and, and they are gods. They are false gods, but they are real. Small G. Okay, right. They are real. Second Corinthians uh, 5, 14. Let's go there real quick. What time you got? Two. Okay. Second, Second Corinthians five fourteen five fourteen. For the love of Messiah compels us since we have concluded that one died for all. As a result, all died. And he died for all so that those who, who live might no longer live for themselves, but for the one who died for them and was raised. <clears throat> so, now, so from now on, we recognize no one according to the flesh, even though... We have known Messiah according to the flesh. I don't, I don't know if you're picking that, what he's saying here up. He's talking about knowing each other by, by the spirit, not just by the flesh. Okay. <clears throat> Yet now we no longer know him this way. So you got to know Jesus, what? By the spirit. Therefore, if anyone is in Messiah, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Messiah and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. And let me see what I want to go. Yes, I want to keep going. Okay, what's the man? That is, in Messiah, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, you and me. And he has entrusted the message of reconciliation to us. The message is, is not God hates you and he's going to burn you up. It's God's done it all. All you have to do is come in to the family. Yeah. God loves you. The ministry of Reconciliation. We are therefore ambassadors for Messiah, as though God were making his appeal through us. And we beg you on behalf of Messiah, be 
reconciled to God. You can hear, you can hear the pleading in his, in his voice. He is pleading that people would come in and get saved. Now, I want to tell you something interesting about, I looked up what an ambassador was. Four, four different types. You can have an ambassador at large. That ambassador is a, has special duties, not appointed to a particular country, and he can operate in several neighboring countries or in a region. Say you got small countries, and so he may have this, that whole region, so that's, what, that's his sphere of influence. You can have an ordinary ambassador. He is sent on permanent missions. Then you can have an extraordinary ambassador. He is dispatched for a particular or extraordinary occasion. I guess that makes sense, whatever. And then there's the plenipotentiary. They are exempted absolutely from all allegiance and from all responsibility to the laws of where they are. An ambassador is cons considered as if he or she were out of the territory of the foreign power. That ambassador, while he or she resides in the foreign state, shall be considered as a member of his own country. And the government he represents has exclusive cognizance, jurisdiction, and or responsibility of his or her conduct and control of that person. The attendants of the ambassador are attached to his person. I want you to get that. The attendants, everybody that works for you, i.e. maybe your kids, okay? The attendants of the ambassador are attached to his person and the effect is in, in his use are under his protection and his privilege and is generally equally exempt from foreign jurisdiction. Jesus and us. Okay? That's what you and I are. We are ambassadors for Christ in a foreign country with a plenipotentiary status. That's why Jesus said, you're in this world, but you're not of it. You are your own, you're really almost your own state within a country, a foreign country where you're stationed. You have, they're, they're, what they call that diplomatic immunity. They can't touch you. They can't do anything to legally. And most of, them, most of the countries, they recognize it and they, they grit their teeth and they don't like it, but they say, he's got diplomatic immunity, gotta leave him alone. And they, and they run, and now a lot of people do things, bad things, but, you know, that's just the way it is. You're not to be touched. If I'm a, an ambassador, Merritt Island can't touch me. I'm a sovereign land I in and of my own self. People who are ambassadors who are in that foreign land who have no idea that they have that ability to claim diplomatic immunity. That's right. Because yeah. they, they, the they don't have their identification. They mm -hmm. don't have the law. Right. They don't, exactly. Yeah. So that's what I'm, that's what I, that's what frustrates me when I look around the church. Mm -hmm. People don't know that they can, they have the power, they have the immunity, they have authority. the authority to walk in. It's, it's the authority, it's the protection. Mm -hmm. The devil doesn't have legal rights to you. Right. He doesn't own you or me. Mm -hmm. He will make the bluff though. I own you. Right. And if they don't know the law, they might they believe him. That's, that's, that's true. Right. Yeah, that's so you true. If you your Bible and you say, uh, no, I know the law. Mm -hmm. I know the law. Yep. And, and you can't do anything to me, so get out of here. That's yep. right. What is he going to do? Get out of there. <laughs> he must believe if you resist it. Right. <laughs> but then you'll hear somebody say, well, I, I tried that and it didn't work. <laughs> okay. So who didn't believe it? Well, they didn't. Th thank you. <laughs> the, spirit, the, the demonic spirit didn't believe right. it. Right. 
you know, that you have to make them believe that you that you're truly who you say you are. We, you know, we, we do not play by Marcus or Queen, Queensberry rules. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't work that way in the spirit realm. No. The devil's a defeated foe. But he acts like if you let him, he's just free to do anything to you. Yeah. Well, remember Job? No. Job was one case. And before the law. It was before the law. Amen. We have, we have the word of God. We have the covenant. Exactly. Have. Right. But we forget those things. Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. Do anything you want. Just be gentle. <laughs> okay. Right. The devil's going to be gentle. Okay. Now, in the, in the, in the new covenant, you're going to see, you, you, when you see words in the, turn to Luke chapter 10. You, we're talking about authority, but sometimes we don't, we don't see the authority because it's obscured by the, the, the language or the way things are in, interpreted. And here's one of the best examples that I can give you, it went, especially if, it's, if you're reading from the New King James or the King James. Uh, I said Luke 10. Let's go to verse 17. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Master, even the demons submit to us in your name. And Jesus said to them, I was watching Satan fall like lightning from heaven. That must be pretty quick. Behold, I have given you authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall harm you. Now, in the King James, that, that word authority and power is actually translated just power in both. So it, it, it leaves it a little obscure. Because what he's saying is just like he translated, and this is a good translation here, I have given you authority over all the ability of the enemy. Because authority is greater than ability. That's good. That's it. Okay? That's good. You do not have the power or the ability to overpower an angel. In and of yourself, you, are, you and I are no match for an angel. Don't think about it. Don't try it. Don't go there. Right. But when you walk in your authority, it doesn't matter how big, bad, and how, how much he's snorting and all that. If you tell him to leave, he must leave because of the authority that you carry. Authority is greater than ability. The natural illustration is the policeman. He carries authority of the city. When he tells you to stop, do you stop or you run him over? Uh, we would stop. Well, I, most we people would. would. Nowadays, <laughs> yeah, right. Antifa and these knuckleheads, they would think to run the guy over, but. Because the police's authority has been stripped. That's why. Yeah. That's and that's said. Yeah. yeah. But that's, but that's how it works, right? We used to have cartoons when I was a kid. Okay, I'm going to date myself. And I remember the cartoons. I remember the, the, the crook would be robbed the bank. You know, they had the, the mask, you know, how the mask always went right there. And they're, and, they're, and they're running out, and the cop would roll up, and then roll up, and he would say, stop in the name of the law. And the, and the, and the cartoon characters would go, hey! Okay, I'm caught. <laughs> Not anymore. That, that, that's how the cartoons were. Yeah, that's how it was. Right. Yeah. I actually remember cartoons like that. Nowadays, <laughs> not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. That's that's no no lawlessness. Yeah, lawlessness. lawlessness exactly. The spirit 
of lawlessness is pervading the land. We can't get caught up in it. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're we not of that kingdom. We're not of that kingdom. We have nothing to do with that. That doesn't mean that sometimes our brothers and sisters don't get caught up in it. And you, you know how it is. Sometimes something will happen and we get swept up in it, the emotion of it. You know, come on, right? Yeah. You've, you've been there, right? Yeah. I'm the only one. No. Yeah. Okay. No. You, you get caught up. Yeah. I do too. And we said, I had no, no, man, no, sucks. That's not you. Come on, you can't do that. But it'll sweep us up too. And if we allow it to sweep us up, we probably have some problems. Because remember, we could have an enemy that's, that's coming out after us. The way the enemy thinks about the other people is, I own you. And that's true. Right. You know, you know, Satan owns the sinners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You, you know that, right? He's a hard taskmaster. He is a hard taskmaster. It, it is the picture of Egypt. Yeah. yeah. And that's where you and I were before we gave our heart to Jesus. Blind. Right. Back to what you said yeah. about the person who has the carding on their right. desk. Mm -hmm. They're sitting in a prison cell with the door open, right? But they're under the influence of the or the authority of the warden, as long as they choose to stay there. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. And you know what's even sadder? I remember hearing uh, someone had a dream. The Lord gave him a dream. I might have told you guys this dream before. Uh, in the dream, the person saw uh, he were outside a cave, and then the vision went towards the cave and then went into the cave. And inside the cave, there, was, there were these bars, looked like a cage. And then as they got closer, there was people in the, in the cage. And they were just walking around in the cage. You know, you know, if you're, if you're in, the, it, you, know, you know how it is when you're in jail, right? That's a joke. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> nobody, nobody bit on that. We were like, no, I'm not gonna admit to that. <laughs> No, anyway, so he sees, the, he sees the, uh, the cage, and as the vision pans forward, he sees these people just kind of walking around in the, in, the, in the cage, and the Lord speaks to him and says, those are my people. And he said, oh, okay, God, well, why are they in the cage? And then he said, the vision pan around, uh, turn around, and he's looking outside the cave. And as he's looking outside the cave, he said, that's the people in the world. And he said, okay. And then he panned back around. Now the people outside were running around just doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And then he panned back around in the dream, goes back into the cave, and the Lord said, those are my people. They think they're not free. I want you to set them free. And the sad part is the door is not even locked. Right. Mm. Wow. Yeah. That's, that, that's, that's a statement of the church. Right, right now. You, you know why? Because we don't, we don't, we don't want to believe this stuff. We want to fight. We want, we want to fight and argue over the scriptures. <laughs> True. I'm right. You're wrong. My doctrine's correct. Yours is wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do we get out of that? I mean, that's what that's that's the state of the church sometimes. And you, you talk, talk. I've talked. I'm talked to people. And, oh, dear God, it's just it just wears me out. I'm like, you know, Lord, I, come on. Really? I, I just don't want to argue with people all the time. It, it's refreshing to see somebody that's hungry 
and you can just pour out and you can pour into them and, and folks are hungry. Do you know what a hungry person looks like? What do they look like? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean seriously. I mean if you know what a hungry person looks like. A hungry person when they get some food in front of them, what do they do? Do, do they sit there and they go, well, I don't know. It's not cooked enough. Yeah. The presentation you got, the presentation. You got anything else? <laughs> Hungry people don't act that way. No. no. You just go after it. Yep. That's right. You go eat. Gobble it up. Bring yeah. it. You, you know, you, you, sometimes you meet believers and, 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 you, and you can see they're emaciated spiritually. And you put, you know, there's a couple of vegetables. Nah, I don't believe it that way. I don't like the presentation. Okay. <laughs> I don't like how you said that. <laughs> Come on, folks. The church has got to wake up. When we, and that's why you, you and I are called to edify one another. We're called to, you and I are called to build one another up. That's what we have to do. And sometimes it's tough. You're trying to build people up and folks want to argue and you go, OK, and, and you go through it. You know, usually what happens, I, I find that what this is what happens. You're arguing, you will argue, you're talking from banter back and forth. And then when you get done, you go, God, I feel drained. Yeah. <laughs> and you are. Yeah. You have to go fill back up. You have to get back in the word, get back in his presence. And you go, OK, I'm good. I'm good, God. I'm good. I'm good. That's what happens. You, you are literally drained. Instead of us meeting one another and we converse and you say, what about this? For? Oh, what about that? You know what we actually do? We wind up charging one another up. Right. You walk away full. I walk away full. Instead of, you know, you drain me. You walk away somewhat full and then throw it away after you leave. Because the word says, what? After the word is sown, right. the devil comes no, I thought it was a couple weeks later. <laughs> Does it say that? <laughs> it says that? Immediately? Immediately. The devil comes immediately to steal the word that was sown in your heart. Immediately. Well, does he show up in a red suit and pitchfork? Usually not. <laughs> That's one way. <laughs> or he can show up with friends. Yeah. Friends. It reminds me of the girl that used to come to our prayer meeting. We used to, that, was our, that was our running joke. She'd show up to our prayer, she'd prayer meeting in California and we'd say, hey, is so-and-so here? Yeah, and she showed up with her friends, too. <laughs> she had devils. In. <laughs> it was just, oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. That. And they were all named opinion. Oh, gosh. Oh, God. I mean, we prayed for that woman every time she showed up. She was always down and out. But she, she, you couldn't get deliverance for good enough because whatever she was doing, she kept going out and doing it. That's it. She didn't turn. She didn't turn. didn't change. Never changed. So you cast them out or you'd pray a, a measure of, of grace and freedom on her. And she and she looked bright eyed, well, a lot brighter than when she came in, and then, and then she'd leave, and you go, okay, and then, a few weeks later, she'd come back, you know, had that dark look, walk in the door, and you go, oh, okay, and you and you could sense, you know, that you know, friends came in with her, like, holy smoke, here we go again, and we kept, you know, we were trying to help, you know, so we, we would, pray and cast out devils, whatever we could, and it was just. Those were in the younger years. I mean, <laughs> so we did, nowadays we would just say, "Look, if you don't, if you're tired of your devil's good. If not, go back." <laughs> we just no. We, we'll help people. I'm just being funny. Like the dog turning back to his vomit. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. And you know, you look. You help people where you can. Yes. You just you just have to know where your level is. You, you just got to know where you and are. A lot of us did it for a time. And yeah. So it just depends on. We're going to continue. We're going to go further. We're going to get in the world. It's seed planting too. And you know what? It was. And and I and I'm not. You don't I, find I, a day of their true deliverance. You know, no, you don't. Them, and he's preparing them all the way in the process. It's 
future. And it's true. eventually they eventually they'll get there if they're continuing on. Look, I mean I was in the ministry and had devils. It took a long time. Mm -hmm. You know That's true. I, I can't believe the deliverance I got later in my life. Yeah. It's like, oh my gosh. True. You know? So it's a is, process. How did you get to that point? Just a lot of the uh, word, you don't even want to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you don't want to. I went away from God. I, from God. I left God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. I think a lot of believers deal with the same thing. All the prodigals are dealing with it. Yes. When they come back, they're going to all need deliverance. Mm -hmm. They're coming back to the church, and they're going to need deliverance. That's true. They don't get it in Church. <laughs> That's true. I saw that over Grayson. Remember Grayson and, and Daniel, um, that they would um, be growing, 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 growing in the Lord. And then one day they would start to come back because of all of the uh, demonic stuff that the devil was showing them and teaching them. And they were having thought they were, quote, having fun with and this and that, you know, all the stupid stuff that, the you know, the devil entices people with young kids. And but they would get to a place where it's like, you know, I'm getting all these promises and I'm not getting, I'm not getting any happier. I'm not getting any freer. I'm, it's getting darker. The, the, to seem like the, 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 the vision is closing down and they would come back and, and right. then they would be able to minister to them. Yes. Yes. Only then after they had gone through all of that, That's right. tried all the other stuff, eat with pigs. pretty much. And then they come back and yeah. then they get free. Yeah. So that, yeah, that's, that's what happens. <clears throat> So we have nine voices in the courts of heaven. I'm not I'm just going to list them here for you. You probably know where to look for most of these. Most of them are going to be found in Hebrews. We have the blood of Jesus. We have the mediator of the new covenant, which is Jesus. We have the spirit of just men made perfect. In the spirit of just men made perfect. Then we have God, the judge of all. These are all weapons on our side. We have the church of the firstborn, the ecclesia, where all the ambassadors resolve, reside. Then we have the General Assembly. Then we have the innumerable company of angels. You have the heavenly Jerusalem. And the voice of finance. Voice of finance. Voice of finance. Yes, your giving. Yeah, the, the, your giving is 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 very important. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of some of these, like that one, uh, the enemy's always looking for inroads. Remember, that's 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 how the game is played. It's the accuser of the brother. He's always looking for what inroad can I use to be an accuser to accuse you of doing something. Hey, I know they're not, they're not tithing, they don't give, they're stingy, whatever, whatever the case may be. You know the enemy, he does not play fair. Right. So your, your giving, remember, is a spiritual function actually. Mm -hmm. Even though it's done with money, it is a spiritual function. Right? Because your giving is something that comes out of your heart. Even though the manifestation of it is a $20 bill or something like that. It's worship. It's, it is worship, yes, yes. And, you, and you, look, and I think you see why, because um, we, we do do we work and we do all those things so yeah there, there's, there's there's a certain amount that's attached there of what we've done in the natural so yeah i can see that okay switching sides authority power of the tongue and then we'll close
Proverbs 18. So we'll go through some scripture here. Proverbs 18, verse 20. From the fruit of his mouth, a man's stomach is filled. With the harvest of his lips, he is satisfied. Death and life are in the control of the tongue, and those who indulge in it will eat its fruit. Ephesians 4. You know, this is going to be very important right here. Yep. Because if we need to do what God is doing. And what is he doing this year? He's teaching us how to speak. Mm -hmm. So this is important. If we will do this this year, yep. we will have God with us to do it. God yep. with us to help it, help us. Yep. This is what the Lord laid on my heart early about this, about this uh, meeting. Well, you were right on that, weren't you? Yep. Yeah, I saw it and I thought, like, okay. That's why I told you, I said, I got to get the books. I got to get the books. I knew it. I knew it. But I was going to get some, I didn't, I, I was going to get something anyway, because um, what God has laid in my heart is I want to sow into you. That's, that's what I'm supposed to do. And I'm, and I'm enjoying that. So in these meetings, I sow into you. You don't just um, sow into me. I get to sow into you. So that's part of my part. Uh, I'm sorry, Ephesians 4.25. Mm, so, okay, so he says, Ephesians 4.25. Uh, so lay aside <clears throat> lying. Each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be, be angry or are you angry? Okay, don't sin. Do not let the sin, let, do not let the sun go down on your anger, nor give the devil a foothold. You notice how he, he, he linked those two together there. Footholds through anger. Mm -hmm. The one who steals must steal no longer. Instead, he must work, doing something useful with his own hands, so he may have something to share with the one who has need. See, it's about giving. It's about giving in our lives. Let no harmful word come out of your mouth, but only what is beneficial for building others up according to the need. Notice, he didn't just say we just go around just, just saying puffy words. He says, have some wisdom and according to the need. Whatever it is, whatever, wherever they are, according to the need. Yeah. So that it gives grace to those who hear it. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, Ruach HaKodesh, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness and wrath and anger and quarreling and slander, along with all malice. Instead, be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving each other, just as God and the Messiah also forgave you. Philippians 2. Verse 14, do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you might be blameless and innocent children of God in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation. Among them, you shine as a light in the world, holding fast to the word of life so that I may boast in the day of Messiah that I did not run or labor in vain. James chapter one. James chapter one, verse 19. Know this, my dear brothers and sisters, 
Let every person be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For human anger doesn't produce the righteousness of God. Uh, so put away all moral filth and excess of evil and receive with humility the implanted, wor the implanted word which is able to save your soul. And then he goes on and talks about a doer. James 3, first one. <clears throat> Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, since you know that we will receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in speech, he is a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body as well. And if we put bits in the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole body as well. See also the ships, though they are so large, are driven by strong winds. They are steered by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. See how so small a fire sets ablaze. You, you hear that language he's, he's using here? Mm -hmm. See how so small a fire sets ablaze so great a forest. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue is a world of evil placed among our body parts. It pollutes the whole body and sets on fire the course of life and is set on fire by hell. For every species of beasts and birds and reptiles and sea creatures is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the image of God. For the same mouth, from the same mouth comes blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, these things should not be. A spring doesn't pour out fresh and bitter water from the same opening, does it? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree produce olives or a vine produce figs? Neither can salt water produce fresh water. Matthew 12. Verse 28. And just to set this up, this is, uh, I talked about this, well, that was at that church. Um, here we have Jesus, had, uh, a lot of things are going on. The Jews have been, have been uh, doing all kinds of things to him, have been dogging him for days. And we're getting ready to come up to Matthew 13 where he is going to start talking to them in parables. The father is done. He's finished. He's done with these scribes, these Pharisees. He's done. He's just done. He says he, he green lights Jesus to start speaking to them in parables. But before we get there, let's look at how some of the things that happened here. Where did I say? Verse 28. Okay, let me find it. So he's talking to them. He, he had cast out a devil and they were all mad about that. And then they accused him of casting out the devil because he was in league with the devil. So that's, that's the backdrop here. That's the context. So Jesus says, but if I drive out demons by the, the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and carry off his property unless he first ties up the strong man. 
then he will thoroughly plunder his house. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. For this reason, I say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. That's pretty, that's pretty strong. He's telling these guys, you're, you're, you're really close. <laughs> What, was, what did he just do? He cast out demons. He cast out demons. What did the Lord say about that? They were ridiculing him and yes. God's warning them, don't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Because that's a work of the Holy Spirit. Yes, it is. These guys are really, that you know, they're probably just too close. I, I would imagine their clothes it would have a little bit of singe smoke. Oof. You would think. Because for the Lord to say something like that, that would send a chill up my spine. I don't know if it did these guys, but <sighs> whatever. Okay. He says, <laughs> every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but blasphemy against the spirit will not be forgiven. That's pr the text is pretty clear. Yeah. Does anybody have a question on that one? Pretty clear. I'm thinking whoever, I'm sorry. It's pretty easy for us to do that then with people nowadays. Like say, oh, I think they're operating with a false spirit. Got to be careful. Yeah. You just got to be careful. Yeah. That, that's why God gave us the spirit. Yeah. That's why we're supposed to be walking in the spirit. Yeah. That, that, yeah. It, it'll keep us out of a lot of trouble to walk in the spirit. Right. Yeah. And the reason why we're a body you have other people to bounce things off of. Mm -hmm. We're not an island to ourselves. We're, we're to submit one to another and say, hey, what did you think about that? You know, I'm getting a check. What did you feel about that? You know, how did, how did, what was God saying to you about it? We don't have to be the end all of everything yeah. just within ourselves. We have a group. We have a people that we can trust yeah. that know God. Unless you're a lone wolf. The word. Yeah, unless you're a lone wolf. That's right. And when you... you get yeah, when you're a lone wolf out there, yeah. that's tough. Or you pick the wrong group. Yeah, or you pick the wrong group. Oh, yeah, true. You pick <laughs> the wrong group. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. Hallelujah. Where are you? Uh, verse 30, 32. Okay. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven forgiven, neither in this age or in the world to come. He said this twice. Yeah. Yeah. That's not good. <laughs> no. <laughs> that is not good. Either make the tree good and its fruit good or make the tree rotten and its fruit rotten for the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good? For from the outflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. The, the good man from his good treasure brings forth good. And the evil man from his evil treasure brings forth evil. But I tell you that on the day of judgment, Men will give an account for every careless word they speak. I think that's careless, idle, inoperative word that they speak. For by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. He's laying it out to these guys, and I'm telling you, it's just a one-two knockout punch on all of them. Yeah. If he was in the ring, half these guys would be on the deck. They'd be just out. Well, and the word says, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yeah. He already knew their heart. Yeah. He's warning them. He give, he's giving yeah. them an opportunity. <laughs> and then he says, either in this age or the one to come. One to come. And Proverbs 6, that'll be, well, almost the last one. Proverbs 6, verse 12. 
we'll start there. <clears throat> a scoundrel, a wicked man, is one who goes around with a perverse mouth, winking his eyes, shuffling his feet, pointing his fingers, who continually plots evil with deceit in his heart, stirring up strife. Therefore his disaster will come suddenly. In an instant, he will be broken with no remedy. Six things God hates. Yes, seven are abominations to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that plots wicked schemes, and feet that run to evil, a false witness who spouts lies, and one who stirs up strife among the brothers. 40% of this has to do with our mouth. Okay. This is so convicting and it's so difficult in this culture. We yep. are definitely have to go against the grain of the culture today because everybody is yap, yap, yap yep. on every social media platform. And it's just very difficult, man. We're gonna, we need the Holy Spirit to help us do this. Lies. Yeah. Lies. The only reason it's not convicting to me right now is because I've already been there and had to be on the floor, oh, my right. face on the floor. <laughs> so I get it first before you do. <laughs> so, okay. Um, we're going to pray a prayer of forgiveness. And we're going to ask God to forgive us. I'm going to pray it too. I'll lead you in it. Um, Galatians. That's what I want. Galatians 6. 7 and 8. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm gonna lead you in a prayer. You can close your eyes, whatever you wanna do, just repeat after me. We're gonna pray and ask God to forgive us of our speech. You ready? Yes. Almighty God, Almighty please God. forgive me please for every idle, word, every idle word, every careless word, I've spoken every word of backbiting, criticism, words of anger, threats, accusations, lies, quarrelings, words of malice, slander, words of hypocrisy, pride and arrogance, words of jealousy, words of strife and rage, Words of cursing and swearings. Words of dissension. Words of rebellion. And words of manipulation. And the control. Which would include any form of witchcraft. Your word says in Galatians 6, 7, and 8. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he also shall reap. For the one who sows in the flesh will reap corruption from the flesh. But the one who sows in the spirit will reap from the Spirit, eternal life. And Matthew 19, 26, let me get there. It says this. Stay there in, in attitude of prayer. 19, 26. And Matthew 19, 26, God, Says, with God, with 
All things are possible. So I ask you for a supernatural crop failure of all these idle, careless words. I've spoken. I renounce them now. I speak death to those words and command them to wither and die. In Jesus' name. I receive your blood and I receive your forgiveness and I forgive myself. No condemnation. I'm free in Jesus' name. Amen. And that's my assignment for the day. Amen. You do want a crop failure, right? Amen. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, that crop, yes, Lord. We w God give me a supernatural crop failure. He's the only one that can do it, though. Amen. Let me yes. Does anybody have any questions, comments? Complaints. Yes. Uh, that's the tree of life. TLV. It kind of substitutes Hebrew words like Adonai, uh, you know, yeah. Elohim. And uh, like when I started reading reading it, it's like, oh, I've got to work, look that. What is he, you know, I'm going to look it up because yeah. I didn't know what it was. I like but the it, way it reads. Yeah, it yeah. helps you to, yeah. to, to, to get used to the Hebrew. They spent a lot of time putting that that Bible together. Yes, thank you. Um, they spent a lot of time putting that together, and I read about it, and I was like, wow, okay. And the, the translation is pretty spot on. On You saw what it said in, in Luke 10, 19. It was spot on. Um, now, the King James in Luke 10, 19 would have said, power and power. Behold, I give unto you power of the treadle, serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. It would have said in King James and in New King James, power and power. So you don't, you don't see which word is authority and which word is ability. You don't see that. You've got to go in, uh, either you've got some software or Strong's or something to be able to look that, but they did it. Or an amp and, and you know, but sometimes they amplify. I, you know, I've used I've used the ESV. Um, I, I go through quite a few different translations, and um, this one's not too bad. I've, I've, I've been my my wife is using. Um, what are you using? That's the Jewish Study Bible. What is the name of that? The C E B or Complete Jewish Bible. Yeah, the Complete Jewish Bible. Yes. So I'm giving you these books as, as seed into your life. Now, I'm, I want to say this about the book. You're, you're probably going to find this out. Usually we, are, we can sometimes be on one end of a spectrum. That is probably going to take you to the other end of the spectrum. Okay? But you've got the Holy Spirit. Amen. So don't get in bondage. Say, Lord, what do I need? Help me. He's, he's going to walk through some things in there. And it's a good book. I, I read that years ago and it, it, it helped me. Um, it's good. And, it, and it's a book. He really dives into the power of the tongue. I mean, he just goes through the scriptures. Boom, 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 boom. Just like some of the ones we read there. And he just, just hits them all over the place. So I don't want you to get, allow yourself to get into bondage. Stay free. Amen. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. Amen. Amen. It's all about staying free. When you stay free, you stay light and you're maneuverable. Amen. You know, too, okay. one of the things that we've faced, you know, in the last year at least, we talk about it as a group, um, talking about other people or um, others in ministry, the body of Christ, so forth. Um, you know, the word... Uh, neighbor has to do with our brother to love your brother as yourself 
And one of the biggest things that God, I think, revealed during that time was talking about one another and talking against. You know what? We all have a part of God, right? And a, a purpose out there. So these other ministries out there, you know, who are we? You know, now if God totally shows you you don't want to be a, back, a part of that, great. So what do we do? It all comes back to praying for one another. Mm -hmm. And I think we came to that place. Um, it was a huge turn for us about a year ago, I'm thinking. And, um, you know, so it all lines up with our time. Yeah, this is what, this is the other thing I, I, I need to say. Um, what the Lord put on my heart is th this, this is the reason we're doing that, and Allison hit it on the head also. I, I really sense that we're, we're getting ready to move into uh, a, a higher plane. Yes. So, but to get there, God's cleaning up some things. He doesn't want to take us there and, you not, and we not be effective. Right. Yes. Because if, if we can't get our speech correct, how can we be effective? Now, what does that mean? Okay, let, let me say this. Does that mean you can't sit down and somebody says, hey, so-and-so's having some problems? You can sit down and still talk about if somebody's having some problems, you, you talk about and say, hey, what's going on? See, this is what happened in the body of Christ years ago in the faith movement. People got so hung up that they wouldn't be real. Right, that's right. Okay? I remember it. I remember this stuff. They got so hung up about speech that they couldn't be real with one another. And, they, and, and Christians were bound, they were literally, people were literally bound up. They weren't coming in the, into the church to say, could you pray for me? And you say, why? Well, I don't want to make a bad confession. Oh my <laughs> God, come on, folks. Everybody's blessed and highly favored no matter what's going on. Yeah. Right, you know, <laughs> how you doing today? And, and they were, oh, I'm blessed, I'm good, I'm, I'm the praise of the Lord, I got the joy of the Lord. Blah, 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 blah. And they would spout this stuff by rote yeah. and then leave the church burdened, burdened yeah. depressed, yeah. Right. instead of being real. And I come in and say, would you please pray for me? This is a, I'm having a tough time today. What do you need prayer for? I don't know, I just feel like, I don't know, I, I just feel like the enemy's just <laughs> banging me over the head. I'm just, you know, I'm not doing good. Pray this depression off of me. I've been battling it. Just be real. And, we, and, and the body of Christ got in such bondage, it, it, was, it was bad. So that's the warning I'm, I'm giving you here. Don't get in the bondage, don't allow bondage to, 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 to um, be free. Just be free. We are called to freedom. Amen. Amen. Unmasked. The word says, freedom. confess your sins one to another that you may be, be healed. There's something in that. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When I asked you guys for prayer, Last week, let me tell you something, a burden just lifted off of me at your house. Oh my gosh, I just needed somebody to pray for me. I just needed a hug from Brian. I just stood there and cried in his arms. We need each other. Yes. I needed that. You know, and by you, you know? doing that, it opened up for the Holy Spirit to really move. Yeah. That morning. Yeah. See, we don't realize if we're not obedient in that, yeah. then true. we stop the flow. Yeah, it's true. And we've got to be, each one of us yeah. have to be obedient. And God will use every one of us. And we've seen that happen over and over. I kind of taught Daniel and Grace in that. Do you know that when you stepped out, then they stepped out, and then it just kept moving. Yeah, exactly. We forget those things. No, we do. You can do it. So we're, we we're uh, this is kind of the war between two seats. Yes. The seat of Satan yeah. and the seat of God. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Until the end. Until the end. That's right. That's right. It is. He sowed. 
in God's field. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. That's right. <laughs> That's right. He sowed into God's field. That's what he's going to do. That's what he did. And those, and those bloodlines are still going because the Israelites didn't wipe them all out. That's no. Right. Wish they had it, but they didn't. We don't know. We don't know who will turn. No. Only God knows the person's heart. We just keep putting the word out there. Keep putting, keep preaching the gospel. And those that have ears to hear, unlike the Pharisees, they will hear. Yeah, that's true. Well, I don't have anything else.